Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. Welcome back. Happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately, again, three man weave. And shout out to D Mills. A good news is I that lock, I locked his ass up. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is D Mills is is a pops man. So, congratulations to to him and his significant other. He's a father. A healthy baby girl. Um, he said he'll be back soon, but obviously he's taking care of business as as he should. As, as pops, he's on his what is it paternity leave? Yep, on man. his paternity leave. Paternity. I think it's. Paternity, paternity for the, for the, for the guys. Okay, okay, um, okay, okay. But he will be back soon. Unfortunately, he missed the best episode of the year because it's Halloween. And I was just curious to what D Mills would have pulled up in. Well, what you got on, Mike? Who are you? I Michael guess. Myers. Um, you even got boots on right now. It is snowing in Chicago, but Remember you got I, boots. That's why I asked D Mills if he saw those old pair of boots. He's going to try to rock them? Yeah. That's crazy because them boots was... Uh, they were Michael Myers boots. They was done with. They was. Yeah. You got to get kind of close to read the Myers because from a far away, you might think it's just like, like, my, work. <laughs> like, my, yeah. I'm like my work uniform. Like this is something Julius be wearing off. Everybody hates Chris. Facts. Big facts. Oh, that actually would be kind of fire to change the name tag to just Julius and Pink Julius. Pitch. I want to give a birthday shout out to my boy, Jason Shelley. His birthday is tomorrow. Uh, he rock with us. My boy is a D1 quarterback. But oh, yeah. Hey, okay. Boy, that we want to get out in that field. For where at? Um, I forgot the school. Is it like it's Miss, another dude I'm supposed to give a happy birthday shout out to. <laughs> I just no, nah, I'm playing. I know exactly who it but, is. Missouri, Missouri State. Shout out to Missouri who, State. Who I want to take this second to give a shout out to my main guy, Herlins. It oh, was his birthday, birthday so I want to give him a big shout out. I didn't do it on the last year's, and he was a little hurt. So happy birthday to my TT Jessica. It's her birthday as well. Oh, since we at the start. Y'all make sure y'all go to your Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, and leave the Heliocentric Podcast five stars. And if you find it necessary, leave some kind words as well. I'm leaning on my through the wire community. Give me in them charts. I want to see myself in, in the chart. I don't have to be top five, but I could be 90 for all I care. But I want to <laughs> see me up there. Um, and since we have the start of the podcast, stop this podcast. You're gonna go. You're gonna go. You're gonna leave five likes for this podcast, right? Regardless. So, while you over there for doing it through the wire, you do it for the heliocentric podcast. I know a lot of y'all watched it on on YouTube. We're doing real good over there. Um, so make sure you, you, you do that for the audio. Thank you very much. And uh Well damn. Mike, what's the drop to Mike? Um I sound like somebody that come prepare with it. I did, I did. Um, I just gotta bring out my new phone. He got hey, Mike Mike is whoa. on a different level today. I, I don't know if we want to put your business out there. No, no. I don't okay. Want to all right. Well, okay. Mike is on a, he got a new phone and he, he leveling up. That's all we can say. Okay. No, I do got the drop. What the hell just fell out your hair? I'm going to have to. Or your face. I'm going to have to. Inv- oh, it's from the mask. I'm okay. going to have to investigate your ass. <laughs> For real. <laughs> he getting too much money now. For real. Okay. So this week's drop the mic is how long before it's the beginning of the season excuse is valid? Mm. It's only been three or oh, around yeah. like three, four games, which is. Way too small of a sample 15 size. games for me. I was thinking 10. 15 makes sense too, though. I like 10. I like double digits. But but, but the reason I say 10 is because the early season is so – like, what's, what you mean, excuse, from a team or player? Because when you start mm-hmm. – if I start off with three – like, like it's going to take Scoo Henderson yeah, a yeah, while yeah. to get them numbers to look right. Right. Because right. he started off so bad. So, like, 15, though, mm-hmm. should be enough for you to start to – Put a dent in them numbers. But right. if you have a first bad three games, mm-hmm. by, by the time you get to 10, it might not compensate yet if you get back on track. if you, When you get to 15, it might start to to fluctuate a little bit better on a positive side. So, mm-hmm. But if you're a team, then 10 games. Yeah, if you're 2-8, and eight, oh, oh, you're 2-8, man. It's a little rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah you I don't know. I wasn't really thinking about individual stats. I was more thinking about, like, the, the, the eye gauge test. of players, I yeah, would say. Like, okay. Okay, through 10 games, if School Henderson doesn't look good, obviously I'm not coming up here saying he's a bust. Right. I'm like, it's, it's going to take School Henderson probably a little bit longer. Or in the team aspect, I actually would probably put 15 on the team and 10 on the player because we've seen teams like your L.A. Lakers last season start off so very slow. Now it took an offseason or a, a trade deadline trade to kind of get things right. But we've seen teams start off very slow. The, your New York Knicks did that last year as well, right, where they like started off slow. Jalen Brunson didn't look great until after the deadline. Um, but 10 to 15 games makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, now, if we talk about players, it depends on who the player are, what they're doing, what the situation is. 
A rookie, School Henderson, can take all 82 games yep. if he needs to. Mm-hmm. Not going to trip. Um, now, Pascal Siakam, Carl Anthony Towns. If I see them do some shit in a couple games, then I'm like, oh, okay, they're back. Mm-hmm. Because that their, their body of work has earned that right for me. So once I see, like, oh, some guys just need to have that game, and it's like, oh, there he is, and then they're back sure. on track. So For sure. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Just – yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, resume and who it is and all of that does matter because a slow start for Steph Curry, we don't, we probably not even acknowledging it. We probably say something, but it's just like, boy, and then once he has 30, it's like, oh, there goes Steph. Yeah, right. I remember Jason Tatum was starting a couple of years ago. People were really kind of on Jason Tatum because he was starting off so slow. And it's like, once the shots, uh, the shots start falling, everything will come back together because people are so reactive. And this is just kind of all sports, but people are very reactive to like, what happens in a one night type basis on a one game basis? It's exciting when the season first start though. You might have a guy like Cam Thomas is averaging like thirty something. Yep. We we don't think in our mind that he'll average thirty over the course of the season, but it's it's exciting to to say that he's doing it mm-hmm. right now. Like this to me, this is the best time you can look up and say like I, I believe Luca in the fourth quarter. I, they played yesterday, so it might have changed. But Luca was shooting like seventy five percent in the fourth quarter with now a turnover the entire season. That is fun for me to say. Like, I always tell people, we got to do our job and analyze things that that is in front of us, the information and um, the facts. But at the end of the day, I am a basketball fan, so I want to root for everybody. So mm-hmm. I want to be able to say Cam Thomas is averaging 30 points. I want to say Luca hasn't had a turnover all fourth quarter. <laughs> I want to be able to say Tyrese Maxey is averaging 30 uh, you know, I want to be able to say these things about all the players. If it was up to me, every player would just be successful. Right. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I don't I don't find myself rooting against anybody. Um, hell, I was a little disappointed that Jalen Suggs didn't make the shot against your team. Yeah. Not, and not not because of the typical I want the Lakers to win, but it was just it would it was fun. I just like to see them just go that back. That last possession was chaos. And if it would have ended in the, that three going it, in. I, I honestly my heart dropped. I thought it was going in, but you know what? We survived, so yeah. And I'm I the love prettiest win, but I'll take it because of that. I love what we're doing today, because what we're doing today for the for the bulk of the show. I know we got to get to James Harden. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, but the the what we're doing, I think, is needed in basketball. Where it's a balance. We're going to be positive, and I don't even think we're going to be negative, but we're going to address some things. It's that it's, are, it's almost too hard to be negative because I was looking at a lot of the players that I have on my list, and I'm like. You can make an excuse for it. You can make, yeah, make an excuse for it. And it's just, it's so small of a sample size. It's like almost feels like a way too early type of thing. For sure. So. Well, let's talk about James Harden. Yeah, let's please This do. is so funny. Because last night, 1 a.m. Central Time, 1.30 Central at the time, time um, I was on my verge of sleeping, laying down. The phone is on the side, little thing. And I hear my phone buzz one time. You know what? Not I had problem. my phone on the charger like late last night. I heard it going off. But what I do now is I keep it, like, on my dresser mm-hmm. because when I wake up, I have to go get it mm-hmm. when it's going off instead of, like, let me just hit snooze. Right. Oh, I feel you. I get you up in the morning. Yeah. So I, I buzz once. No big deal. Mm-hmm. It buzz twice. Ah, no big deal. When that third and fourth buzz <laughs> happened, I'm like, let me see what's going on. And then it was the notification that the tray happened. So, you know, I got to go get my video off. Right. So I go for, I, I say goodnight to, to, to Suzanne. I say, hey, we I got to go to work. Mm-hmm. I go downstairs and I'm loading everything up, patiently waiting for the goddamn details of this trade to drop. It took 28 minutes after the official trade was announced to know who was involved. And I think most of it had to do because now we know that there's a 13 OKC Thunder when it comes to the picks or whatever, whatever. But that was probably being figured out. But on Twitter at 1 a.m. Central Time to see everybody just waiting for Wolves to do something, to say something was elite. And now James Harden is... A part of the L.A. Clippers, finally, after months and months and months of us thinking he was going to I was wondering why James Harden was so smiley and cooperative all of a sudden. He was at the last game, chopping it up with the players, doing handshakes. I'm like, oh, look at James Harden maturing. I guess he's just going to patch things up. Nah, he knew mm-hmm. something I ain't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy for him, though. You, you, The Clippers got who they wanted. He got to go where he wanted. And the seventy sixers get to wash their hands with it. It's hilarious the package that they got back. Let's get let's get that um that package. Darryl Morey was 
supposedly waiting for. So the package is what? Robert Covington? It was Marcus Morris, Nick Batum, Robert Covington, K.J. Martin, multiple first-round picks and a swap for James Harden. The multiple Clipper- second-round picks, right? Multiple second-round picks. The uh, Clippers are sending a 2028 unprotected first-round pick, two, tw- two second-round picks, and then later in the morning, I guess this morning, we found out that the third team involved was the OKC Thunder. They gave up the less favorable of this and that. Just know that there's two picks associated, two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and then that conglom- conglomerate of mid players where is who is okc <laughs> getting nothing it's it's like lo- loosening up some protections okay from the paul george trade okay. where the pick that they're sending back I, this is so i can't believe that y'all putting this up here I, this is so damn small to think that i can read this well the crazy. people at home will be able to read it and i just read it without the glasses too my glasses are in my, my front pocket where my shur- shurigan should be at um but i wear a glass i don't have my glasses he's pulling out some glasses when he's supposed to be pulling out that heat Oh, uh, uh, he got his hands. Yeah, he get his on, ass locked Dangerous up. Dangerous hands right there. Yeah. Um, get his ass locked up. Fucking around with me and mine. <laughs> this is not a fire drill. Yeah, it is the real thing. We can we can go back full. Yeah, I, yeah, I <clears> said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I I like this trade for the the Clippers. I like it for the Philadelphia 76ers. We can all go put a bet in that Tyrese Maxey is going would would be MIP or something? Yeah, uh, I think so. It's almost a lock at this point. <laughs> like, if you did you bet? Did you say that early in the you season? Did, yeah, that was your guy. That you were in our pick. prediction episode. That was your pick. Uh, I remember. Should have put some money on it. I put it in my uh, podcast in the video. So for for the sake of um, co- being correct, OKC is sending out the worst of their 2026 picks, Thunder Clipper Rockets for the 2027 first round swap with the Clippers. The Clippers stars will be 36 to 38 years old in 2027. And OKC's core will be 25 to 29. OKC trading a likely low f- pick for a chance or huge upside, and that is from Brandon Rubar, um, who I think is an OKC yeah OKC beat writer. So he has all the deep. Deets, deets, deets. Mm-hmm. So I, like I said, I woke up to this trade, like basically just checking my phone from what I missed. And my first thoughts is for the Clippers, just like, yeah, I, it don't even put like to me. They're still not the favorite, you know. Mm-hmm. Even just hearing the roster that they have, I mean, I guess it can help them a little bit in the regular season. We know James Harden for the most part, he can play. He can play a hefty amount of games in case Paul George or Kawhi needs to sit or whatever like that. So you have that, but. I don't know. I have seen everybody after this year a free agent, basically. Yes. Yeah. So uh, all so, of them is hitting the open market. So it now. feels like an ultimate gamble right here, which you kind of just gave up a lot of draft conversation, almost all your draft conversation at this point, too. So you're kind of banking on this one team, and it's still not even a favorite to me at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. Who would you take over so the right in Right into it. Uh, you talking about Wes? Uh, still, the, the Denver Nuggets. I no, think, I'm saying if they, they played the Lakers. If they the played the round, Lakers. Would you, Mm. I think this got me leaning towards Clippers. Finally, it's got me going go Clippers heavily. I think I that can't they, even. I can't even. My Lakers haven't been looking that good either. I was honestly thinking about what they got to do out west. Not even just my Lakers. You could say they beat my Lakers. I'm thinking about the Nuggets. And that Nuggets is the team you got to beat out west. And for them, they don't have. They just gave up a lot of wings for them too. You know, so they're gonna give up a lot of size. I, Mason Plumley, Angelo Jokic. I, I really don't know. He's not their starting center though. Same thing with Zubox not hanging with Jokic either. Yeah. I so, mean, real shit. That's it. But you're talking about the best player in the yeah. world. It's Anthony not, Davis wasn't hanging with his ass. If Anthony Davis can't hang with him, I've just got to accept the fact that I, I just don't have the answer. I don't know. I think they did a lot for – they're going to end up biting the bullet on this. But I, I, on the flip side for the uh, the Sixers, and I hate to just be so, like, all bad and one good, but i just been feeling like – since he hasn't even been playing, honestly, and how it's been going with the, how they're like their relationship, they just needed something. They just needed something. They got added depth, which you're gonna find out which players can fit the rotation if if you and if you're gonna end up flipping some down the road. But from a like a high from hindsight, for me just looking at this, this I feel like this was a rush move for the Clippers. I love this for the Clippers. The Clippers mm-hmm. been you thought it was rush for the Clips? Yeah. Well, not in rush for like because they've been talking about it for a minute, but it's just like. Y'all just threw all your your you know your chips in one bag. I I 
but I think I think that is a positive for the Clippers to be in the Clippers. This is year number five of them mm-hmm. having this these two guys. And, and the question we've had for the last four years is like, will they ever get a point guard? Will they ever get a point guard? Will they ever get a point guard? Over this last season alone, I put it in my notes because I was just driving here thinking, we saw rumors of them trying to get Chris Paul when Chris Paul became available. We saw them get rumors about Drew Holiday when Drew Holiday became available. Kyrie. Malcolm Brogdon was actually traded to the team. They've been desperately needing a primary ball handler. As, as much as they love Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. they understand – that having someone better on the roster that can handle the ball is beneficial to them. So I thought out of the group of guys that were available, James Harden is the one that makes the most. No, I guess Drew Holiday probably makes the most sense personally. He's but already gone. He was gone. You right? had to give a lot of lot more up. It would have been a lot more yeah, up. That, that's the only thing I was like the Clippers I can see because you didn't really give up much. You could say that yeah the the wings you kind of need the part them for you that. Be confused though. It's just he didn't give up much, but it's the just, I, I still don't think that shit's going to work. Morris Mook has not played play this season. Um, Robert Covington is averaging like three points per game. Nicholas Batum is like one of the staple guys he's of the era, guy. but he's not playing very well at the moment. This is just a sa- this was a salary dump trade. The the 76ers said, hey, we want either Terrence Mann or we want two first round picks. They got the two first round picks. I personally believe that this could go a couple different ways for the 76ers. They the reason why this trade is done now and not wait until December 15th where everybody's eligible for trade is because they wanted something that that Can could potentially make, make something happen at the yes. deadline. Where if hypothetically the Bulls decide that it's time to blow it up, they have players on the roster on expiring contracts plus these two tradable first-round picks from the Clippers, and I believe they have one tradable first-round pick of their own. It's like, hey, this same exact package we just gave got for James Harden, we could throw it to another team to maybe fill out the roster now, or we keep that draft capital and we do the trade in the offseason because they gave up P.J. Tucker, who was one of the few people under contract next season. We have two max spots still. So now we can use these draft cap- this draft capital now, or we can hold on to it Size the people in free agency and then use it later down the line to do the final trade if that is the case. Hopefully, they just got Joel Embiid's blessing because all of this, of course, is depending on him willing to stay around. But because Tyrese Max is playing so goddamn good, I think James is, I mean, not James, I think Joel is fine. Tyrese Max, he looks like an all star. They might be able to thug it out until February and see what's going to happen. The Toronto Raptors look terrible. They do. They got Pascal Ojean and Obi who could be movable. The Bulls look terrible. Though they're two and two, they look terrible. They could potentially trade away Zach Levine. I think they'd probably prioritize Zach Levine over Demar Derozan. And I'm sure there's going to be more teams. It's a lot of teams that just decide, ah, this not our season. Let's take a step back. Because every year we get multiple teams hitting the reset or retooling button. I don't mind this trade for the 76ers because what is the alternative? There was not 29 other teams is not interested, or 28 other teams is not interested. It was the Clippers. It was just the Clippers. And they tried to do the leverage move. Oh, we won't, we won't trade them for anything less. And they got what they wanted back. And the Clippers got their point guard. I, I see this as mutually beneficial. To go back to P- Pierre's question, do I see them as a favorite? I s- don't. But the the mm-hmm. do you remember you earlier in the two? season? Huh? Do you see them too? I it, it, I got to see at least the first game. Okay. Because James Harden I, yeah. has I li- been a player that wherever he goes, his style of play goes with him. And the Clippers are coasting right now. They look amazing. And I don't want it to be like dribble, dribble James with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's going to be a lot to figure out. Luckily, we don't really got we don't really got to do that. Mm-hmm. But that's probably the thing I kind of worried about, too, is kind of like what how much like how much responsibilities does people have? Because Kawhi Leonard, he, he needs his shots. Mm-hmm. You know, I like him with the ball in his hand. Russ obviously distributes the ball. Now you got James Harden to do that, too. Paul George has been. Pretty damn good so far this season too. So pretty damn great. He's been all NBA caliber so far. I'm just interested to see it. You know, we've been talking and we've seen it with my Lakers too. It's it's always not the the best when you kind of name chase, but the one difference I will put in this versus name chasing is that yeah. they didn't give up shit. Yeah, I think it's when the Lakers name chase y'all gave up everything. <laughs> when the Nets did it, they gave up every. You gave up. Jared Allen, Karis Levert, Spencer, De- uh, the shit, D'Angelo Russell, everything that made them cool and gave, gave the Nets they swag, mm-hmm. they gave it away. Everything that made the Lakers that young, exciting team, they gave it away. Rightfully so, the Lakers at least end up winning a championship. The second name chasing when you gave up KCP, Cal Kuzma, that was the for the, the, yeah, the bad Russell move. Westbrook. Yeah, but the um, first one, 
you do over again. So yeah, I just I just love it. I love this for both sides personally. I love it for the Clippers because they didn't give up anything that they felt was important. So to to bring in James Harden, um, I, I think they still have a lot. They have James Harden. I like the version of Bones that they have this year. Um, he looks a lot more conf, uh, com, confident. I'm trying to fix my beard. <laughs> he still has to take better shots and different things like that. He has some room to improve, but he just looks better. This, the best he's looked is is the, is with these Clippers in these first few games. You still got Norman Powell, uh, Zubak, Mason Plumley. You got a uh, you got a lack of wings. You got Terrence Mann. I was gonna say wings. when you're coming out there, Ross, they do they seem really small. But you're built around wings. Yeah, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. When it's time, you can stagger their ass. Easily. And Russell Westbrook is a madman. So there's some things to like. And they they probably not done. You know, the buyout market, all type of things is going to happen at some point in the season. I don't so know we'll if they're able to. Yeah, because the luxury tax? Yeah, because of the new rules. I would have to cap is. go see. Because, of course, PG, Kawhi, um, and now James are all on max contracts currently. And then even, like, Norman Powell is making, what, 18 M's annually. So they might not even be able to hit the, the buyout market. Um but it, it, did it they is, ever extend Zubac again? I don't remember. I don't. I feel like this. If they didn't, I feel like this. He's got to be on like one of his last years. I feel like they did. I can look. Um, I I do love that every big Clipper stray happens at two a.m. The Paul the Paul George Kawhi thing happened at summer yeah. league just randomly in the like one a.m. in the morning. It's just the way they run. Now they're on the West Coast too, so for them it's not that late. But mm-hmm. it's it's crazy that that's how they get things done. So Zubac is yeah, unrestricted in a couple seasons. Okay, his salary, his salary um, is small. They still, you know, I'm surprised. Norman, I guess Philadelphia was like, "We good. We don't need nothing tied yeah. up." Yeah, they don't want the extended contract because his his contract goes pretty pretty long. Um, I'm excited to see like their small ball lineup, man. They can go a couple different ways with it. You know, we gonna have Kawhi and PG on the court. I want to see. You remember when uh, the the Houston Rockets traded everything away to let Russ be the five? Mm-hmm. Run it back, baby, and a small ball lineup. Run it back. Throw Terrence Mann and James Harden out there. Come on, that team is gonna be kind of nice. They got rangy, switchable defenders as long as you can get James Harden to buy in. But the rest of them able, and then they got some some things you can work with. A pick and roll between James and Russell Westbrook again after what five years? It's been five years since we've seen it. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Has it been? It's been a while. Uh, the bubble. So twenty. So three years. Mm-hmm. Right, they played against um, OKC in the bowl, um, but it's been a while. It's been a while, and they're finally back together. Uh, I'm excited because, based on the reclamation pro- reclamation process project for Russell Westbrook, where when he was with the Lakers, he was he was the talk of the town in a negative way. For him to go to the Clippers and then embrace him, call him their leader, so on and so forth. Um, I'm just excited to see what they could potentially do with James. And now this is beneficial to both sides where James is not pressured complete. Because the real question is, will he be able to perform in the playoffs? Mm-hmm. Last year we saw him give us 240 pieces and the rest, he was awful. Um, but now with him having um, amazing playoff player Kawhi Leonard on his roster, hit or miss playoff play. We got some great series from Paul George. We've also got some not so great series with Paul George yeah. where James is not expected to be the, the second best player. But if he ends up being the second best player on any given night, you feel great about it. Or if he can just be himself. Just be be an average version of James. Because it feels like James is either up here or he down here. If we can find somewhere in the middle come playoff time, it, it should be dope. They got some good cutters on the team. Terrence Mann, good cutter. Russell Westbrook, obviously, good cutter. Russell Westbrook was phenomenal in the playoffs last year. It should be it should be fun. And now the 76ers don't have to worry about it no more. Tyrese Maxey has the reins fully. That's exciting for yes. him. Yes. Because they were saying, like, he was uh, James Harden was going to try to warm up and play next game. I'm like, I don't know if I want him to play next game. No way Tyrese Max is hooping. <laughs> they, didn't want him, they didn't want him to either, the and way they like had him. Rid of him. Yeah, they're talking about they locked him out the plane. Yeah, yeah. That's a, I wonder if we ever get the full story of that. We gonna, yeah, we will. It's just going to be years in the future, I guess. Um, but James Harden, a Clipper. Now, they play tonight against the Orlando Magic. I highly doubt he's hooping tonight. But I think they play again tomorrow, second night of a back-to-back, and he might. Be ready. But knowing James Harden, watch him not be in shape enough to hoop yet. And now we got to wait five days before we finally get to see him in a uniform. I don't know. I feel like 
he, he come. I feel like he's the type of player he got to work himself back into shape but more. That's so what he was missing these games for to, to work out. Well, that's what they say. He did. He only scrimmaged one time with the 76ers mm-hmm. in his legendary "I'm here" practice. Uh, so I don't know. We'll, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. But exciting stuff, man. The the Western Conference keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like whoever make it out of that conference deserves it, man. Because you go every single. There's no off. There will not be an off series. Uh, a series where you should be highly confident in because there's so many teams that are good. Yeah, I think that's the best thing about the season thus far. Is like. When you look around, there's so many different teams. You obviously have clear-cut contenders. You got teams who you're not sure yet if they could be a contender. Then you got teams who have history and have guys like the Miami Heat, um, the Warriors, the Lakers with LeBron. And then you have teams that might not be a contender, and you nobody's pr- projecting or picking them to go to the finals, but they're just going to be a tough-ass out, and they're going to make whoever they play Earn those wins come playoff time, and it's going to make for some entirely good basketball, man. Because if I'm the number one seed, that's supposed to be a bye. I'm supposed to just play somebody easy. Yeah. And I can get matched up with the Lakers. Yep. I get matched up with the Kings. Oh, hell no. I can get matched up with the Warriors. That ain't no damn reward. (laughs) So I'm loving the landscape of the NBA right now. And so far, I said on my podcast, I don't know if y'all realize, four, four years into the new decade, we got four champions. Yeah. First time since early 70s. We had I really think the Lakers, about that. the Bucks, Warriors, Nuggets. And now we can get us a five years in. We might have five different champions. This this is the decade where everybody get a ring. I want that, honestly. I need the I need um the Bulls to get one of those doing. All right, let's get into what we planned on doing today before James Harden broke broke um as a clipper. And we're gonna talk about the most surprising. I guess disappointing players versus the most surprising or impressive players on the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, who who wants to start off first? Um, Mike. Yeah, I can start off first. Uh, I'm just gonna get this out the way. I feel like this is an obvious one, but it's just the way he's been playing. It needs to kind of be said. But impressive, Luka Doncic. Mm. The way they have started off the season, he's got him undefeated right now. But he feels like he deservingly needs to be in that MVP race and in his too early MVP race. He's right there probably leading the charge and the impact that he's had it feels like if he's not there if he's not playing at that type of level they lose some games Luka Doncic in the Mavericks you know they were battling out with the Grizzlies and all of a sudden the man hit like three four threes in a row that's the type of MVP stuff that you know he's going to be doing on a night in night out basis and it feels like it 39 11.7 and 9.7 is his average just right Basically now triple double man um I also had, I knew that we were gonna have to talk mm-hmm. about him so I got a long list Cause I know yeah, I just be have overlapped. a bunch of names. Yeah. I was like, let me get this one out the way. I ain't got no long name because I knew y'all was gonna talk about obvious people, so I got hidden, guys. You think you're better than me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just didn't want. I didn't want to come over. Oh, I got Luca too. Yeah. And now we ain't got nobody to talk about. No, I, I, I just want to give Luca the flowers because yeah. all three of these games. Well, the first two games ended up with him hitting big ass clutch shots down the stretch. Um, and this one too, yeah, this one too. It might not have been with thirty seconds left or a minute yeah, left. I feel in the like game. he sparked that whole like that sparked that whole type of run they went on. Because in the second half, it felt like a lot of people were like, and they were in their groove. They were hitting shots. They were in big shots. You know, big shout out to like Grant Williams and Derrick Jones I, I mean, Jr. Derrick Jones Jr. They hit. They did you hear what they said? He shot what? No. He hit, they he uh what he hit two threes back to back. And they were like, to his credit, he shot a career high thirty four percent, thirty four percent. I must have listened too close. I thought he said forty. Yeah, he shot thirty four percent last um, year with the Bulls. Like, bro, that's still below <laughs> average. That's, yeah, <laughs> that second half, a lot of them was making shots. Yeah. Josh Green made yep. some threes. I love when Josh Green gets the ball on the curl and he just goes. Mm-hmm. He's like, phew, like two one dribble, phew. Um, but yeah, Luca. Luca is the reason and that the Grizzlies no. team just fights, man. That 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 that's so. Tim Hardaway still has that spark where he might he gonna give you try he gonna try to give you fifteen to hey, twenty. Thank you for passing me the ball. That's one of my most impressive guys to start Pass the season. Passing me the damn ball. Uh, you Tim only get one half of them, but that that one half. Woo! Tim Hardaway Jr. Man, nineteen five mm-hmm. and two, forty two from the field, uh, thirty seven percent from three, and one hundred percent from the free throw line. Every team, in my opinion, need a guy like this. And he's been a plus in every game so far for them. I just think that when you talk about the Jordan Clarksons, you talk about the the Lou Wills, or uh, I'm trying to think some who who else fits this mold that I was thinking about mm-hmm. Tim Hardaway Jr. But you need a guy that just willing to come in and take take shots that a lot of other guys won't take, 
it's a skill, in my opinion, to take tough ass shots and like be able to make them on top. He's of somewhat that. like anyone consistent at making those tough yes. shots. You know, you just need a guy that's just like not turning down shot. We t- we even talk about that in pro am. We're like Kyron turns down certain shots, and we like, bro, just shoot him. You just have shoot to. Sh- we need like you're more valuable shooting that shot than trying to like pass it up because a lot can come from those shots. You know, you making those shots, you add pressure on the defense, and I think that's what's important for the Mavericks. And it's been a slow start for Kyrie this early season. They missed yesterday too, uh, and yeah, didn't play yesterday. Mm-hmm. So you need somebody who can take somewhat of attention off of the defense, so Luca can cook. That that just. It's so much harder to guard him when you have to pay attention to Kyrie and now Tim Hardaway Jr. Oh, shit, Grant Williams. He's making shots as well. Derek Lively and uh, like, is a live threat. And they got Jaden Hardy knocking it down too? Like, oh, yeah. Jay, shout out to Jaden Hardy. Come on now. Uh, that's a good one. Um, the I feel bad for the Grizzlies. <laughs> I do too. They've had some tough losses. Man, they just, I mean, they're missing, what, five of their top eight rotational players? If they like, had an all-NBA point guard, they'd probably be undefeated. If they had a start and center, they'd also win a bunch of games. It, like they're mi- who are they missing? John Morant, Stephen Adams, Brandon you know Clark, Brandon Clark Salty Aldama. It's gonna be somebody that's like I told y'all they was gonna fall out. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. They did one real to me. Silver lining. Zaire Williams looks good. Should I talk about Zaire Williams? Go ahead. He looks good. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He look. He look. He look better. You remember when we were in summer league and he was walking around? I was like, why the fuck is bro not playing right now? Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> true. And he looks like a player that, I mean, summer league is summer league. You can get run anywhere, but um, good call. Good call. He's rebounding the hell out of the ball for a team that needs some rebounding. Santi Aldama, well, yeah. Yes, yeah, man. Injury, injury, injury. Who else? Luke Kennard also injured. Like, they're missing so many players. And when he did play, he was clanking for a guy who was usually lights out from Trey Ball. Yep. Uh, my next guy is the only pillar of brightness in this whole organization. I dro- I was going to drop a video of 100 bars for the Toronto Raptors until James Harden got traded. So that video's in the archive, and I might have to drop it eventually. Um, Scotty Barnes is the only thing worth watching about the Toronto Raptors. Right now, their half-court offense is 70, 75 um, points per 100 possessions, which is 20 points worse than league average last year. Mm-hmm. That is by far the worst in basketball at the moment. Obviously, we were talking about, what, four games for them. So, again, smaller sample size. But if you just, the eye test just says that this team cannot score, and the only time you have any confidence in this offense is when Scotty Barnes has the ball. He looks way more confident with it. He's making passes that he wasn't able to make last season. He's turning the ball over, maybe at the same rate, but the the, the, the calls of the turnovers is just mm-hmm. a little bit different. Um, whenever he has a small defender on him, he's, like, demanding the ball, which I love to see. Mm-hmm. And... There's a lot of movement in this offense now. It's not equal in points at all. But Scotty has been looking like the player that I thought he might look like last year. And, of course, last year was a disappointing season for him. So he is the only reason to watch. And Grady Dick looks good after those yeah. last two I, games. I'm going to tie it. in some disappointments, too, because I just want to spend the whole like back end talking about disappointments. Mm-hmm. I had the Raptors in there. Just as a team. As, as a team, because... I think they had a little bit of expectations to kind of like come out a little bit stronger, just kind of be in that playoff hunt. And the way that they're playing, they're playing now, they just don't look like they could be that team. You yeah. know, um, they went uh, lost to the Blazers. The I worst kinda, team in ball. They shot the ball horrendously. Like I think, oh, I it was like I, four for twenty. Something. They like, shot like nineteen percent from three. Yeah, it was awful. Forty percent from the field, and, and they were just, open looks too. A lot of them. And it's just you can't. Especially once teams catch on and they're getting scouting for they already know you can't shoot. But it, during the game, you're not hitting shots. Teams are going to pack in that defense, and it makes team, it makes everything harder. It makes defense harder when you have to constantly sprint back from getting, you know, they're getting the rebound and pushing it out. You have to constantly get back. So Yeah. Um, luckily, the defense is, is solid. Like, mm-hmm. actually not solid. It's really good. Even, well, yeah, when they, when they get their chance. Because they, OG, Scotty, Pascal, even Dennis the Menace, they're going to they're gonna do their stuff on defense. Yeah. It's just hard when you can't count, you can't put the ball in the cup. Yeah, um, if they're on the break on Falav rebound, mm-hmm. not really stopping them. But if you can slow them boys down, I mean, of their four games this season, two of them they did not crack on hundred points, and then one of the two games they did crack one hundred points, they went into overtime and scored one hundred four total. Mm-hmm. So if that was a, a, a regulation game, that's three of their first four games not cracking hundred points, which is just rare in twenty twenty three. So I understand them being a huge disappointment because it's a dreadful watch at the moment. Um, they should be two and two. 
after the last two minute report says that the Bulls got some favorable calls in their game. Shout out to the to the referees. Uh, the but Bears just made a trade. I saw that. What was it? Montez Sweat. Montez no. Sweat. For real? Okay. I can't. They gave him a second round pick, so I'm assuming bro's decent. He's a oh. pass rushing. Really I, I knew his position. Oh. Um, but he's a free agent after this season. You give up a second round pick for a potential free agent. He's a good guy. All right. Um, yeah, that's not bad to have him as a dis- them as a disappointment. Uh, Scotty Barnes yes. has been nice, man. Love yes. mid range shooting. He's aggressive as hell. Um, it's been five triple doubles this year. He has he has one. Y'all know where the other four came from? Luca. He ain't got all four. Jokic. Oh, oh, boom! Y'all got it. <laughs> oh, just those <laughs> they three. Got two apiece. Oh, okay. Um. Another impressive. Yo, oh, shout out to Jokic. She like would tie LeBron or pass LeBron on triple double list. Is that mm. what I read okay, yesterday? Okay. Um, so shout out to Jokic. Uh, another impressive guy for me. Again, I'm doing low key guys. Jalen Smith with the Pacers, man. I'm loving the way that Jalen Smith is playing. He don't play no more than twenty game. I mean, twenty minutes per game. But he's shooting the ball really well, and he's playing a lot better than he did last year. I expected this last year. Um, but it's coming out this year. I think he's averaging like 11 points per game, five rebounds, um, 70% from the field, 57% from three. That's, I mean, just to have that off the bench, I like, I love that for the Pacers. And, yeah, I, I had a lot of stock in this dude like last I believe it was last year, if not last year, the year before, and it was extremely disappointing. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy to see Jalen Smith back on this shit, man. Shout out to Jalen Smith and the Pacers. Still, no, not undefeated no more. Shout out to the Bulls. Mm-hmm. Some favorable calls for the Bulls in that one as well. We'll see in a couple minutes. Um, my next guy uh, is Brandon Miller. Uh, it's a rookie guy. Came out strong. And the reason I got him up on this list is just kind of comparing him with the top three guys, Vic, Scoot, and him. We kind of uh, we all had different perspectives, but I feel like B. Mills was kind of like the guy that was on the lower end of that, mm-hmm. and he's coming out as a second. So I, I want to give him his props to that. The Hornets still got to figure some stuff out. Uh, I'm gonna say their point guard is he's been their he, best player. Who B Mills? B Mills has been the best their player point guard, season. but yeah, yeah, he's been absolutely amazing so far. And honestly, Mello ain't healthy yet. I know that could be issue. Um, because he's he's on my disappointing list yeah, for sure. He is too. Um, just it's just not him. You know, he had the one game where he's get to the free throw line. I'm like, oh, okay, here go Lamelo. And the last couple have not been great. But the silver lining is that B Mills looks great. Um, on on all levels actually, three point shot looks really good. Driving to the lanes, defense is uh, uh, advanced yeah, he, 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 for for Rook. He need credit and respect because a lot of people talk shit on his name for no reason. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I I, I want to see a lot of praise from from going forward for him. I just love the confidence. Like no matter we seen that when we were talking to him, but it's just no matter where he goes, he's got that confidence with him on his shoulder. He just not he just never been a bad basketball player. So I just didn't understand where everything was coming from. And Scoot we're, is good as well, but Scoot is not like Vic. He's not like. You didn't take Brandon Miller over Victor Wimbayama. So it's were like, they saying that he's bad, or that they just think that Scoot has a higher ceiling? Because I I don't I don't know. That, if, but I mean, if they both had high ceilings. I just again, it's not like he was taking over Vic. If you like Scoot more, then you like Scoot more. But that don't take anything away from Brandon Miller. They were never in like these two completely different worlds. I I never understood that that conversation to pretend that it's like here and here no it's that that just was never it and i still think scoot i still think scoot is going to be good Mm -hmm. and has a chance to be so i'm not saying this off of these first four games for him and the trailblazers but this whole lopsided um perspective that people have between the two this dude is a six nine at the least (laughs) sharpshooter at the least and that's just like yeah at the worst now you talk about the potential of him being able to be a shot creator and and, and do more than just being and a, you see a it too like he can get out in transition and he looks comfortable with the balls like playing right? with the ball without the he ball, looks comfortable shots, making the pass making the right play I just didn't in the bucket this is overthinking when it comes draft time they just overthink and, and, and shit that don't need to be said gets insinuated if you like a person you just like that person but just to act like oh my gosh I cannot understand how they're doing that. Well, I see they have a franchise point guard, and they wanted to put shooting around him. Uh, my next guy is Chris Paul. Have y'all watched the Warriors play ball? Yeah, Chris Paul. He had has, an incredible move the uh, other day on the baseline. Yes, um, Chris Paul has added Who was a that whole. Against? That wasn't against the Rockets. That was against. Uh, the... That was the Rockets. Oh, okay, that was the Rockets. Yeah, um, right. Because I was like, he doing his old team in. 
He's adding another element to the team that they've never had before, Michael. I know you think I'm trolling or something. No, I don't think you're trolling. It's my favoritism showing my fandom. I'm I'm mad because you get to pick one of your guys and I can't pick none of them. Oh, you can talk about Austin Reeves. In, the uh, in, a bad, in a bad no. way, yes. No, in a no, bad way. Have to, I will. But go ahead, go ahead. I, Chris Paul's just adding another element to the team. This team has always been a, a super fast paced, um, high turnover team. That's just what their identity is. And it works out, obviously, they got a lot of championships. Now their pace is towards the middle of the pack. They, they're turning the ball over it. A good amount, but less than before. And for the first time in Steph Curry's career, when he's off the court, the team is good. Mm-hmm. For the first time ever. 14 years. You look, look at every single on-off Steph Curry number for the last 14 seasons, and they will tell you the team has been dramatically worse with him off. And for the first time, we're talking four games, they are better. And a lot of that's credit to uh, Chris Paul, where even Steve Curry in his post-game pressure said, yeah, we're going to have some minutes of them playing together, but we want Chris to facilitate that second unit, and we see him, uh, him, Kaminga, Gary Payton, the, the second. Moses Moody started yesterday because Clay Thompson didn't play. Dario Sarek. Um, Dario, uh, they just look like a different team in the best way possible. And for the regular season, they've won three games so far on the road. Mm-hmm. And it took them to the middle of December last year to get three road yeah. wins. So they're just better. See, I, this is what the war. This is the every great warrior team lean on veteran players off the bench, mm-hmm. not youth. And last year it was solely youth. And now we back. Even if it ain't the greatest name, because Chris Paul is a great veteran name to have off your bench. But even when they had Otto Porter, you know what I mean? Names like that. Maybe Leandre a champion Barbosa, Porter. Sean Livingston, um, obviously Iguodala, David West. Those, those are the championship. Most Spates came in there torture. Those Big are the Mo. championship warrior teams. These ain't, you know what I'm saying? They're just mm-hmm. veteran players who understand the game of basketball. Yeah, I'm not mad at the pick at all. I mean, I feel like as soon as that trade kind of went down, it was just like at least hindsight for me that he was going to fix a lot of their errors and no, they're not the perfect team, but it's just hard when you point two, two great point guards and such like, you know, NBA minds together and it just don't really work out, Mm -hmm. you know? So they've given nothing but praise. Chris has come off the bench twice back to back games. Um, and that was the first time in 1300 games. It was the longest streak from his first game to now. Not coming off the bench, and he did it. Embraced the role so far, and winning can solve them there anything, bro. For sure, if you win in and it's successful, well, I mean, shit. Wardell is playing out his his oh his yeah. mind I right mean, now. That's Devin Gurry. Yeah, I mean, we talking forties left and right. You mm-hmm. watched the Houston Rockets game. We had four back to back to back threes. That shit was so crazy. Bro. It's just it's so having, unreal. I was having fun. Mm-hmm. I was liking the game, and he just said, "Nah, this one over." Yes, yeah, it's, it's, I'm gonna do my part now. Because in that game specifically, the second unit was better than the first unit. You know, they when Steph Curry got subbed off the floor with four minutes and ten seconds left, they were down by three. And when he got put back in the game, they were up by double digits. So the second unit came in, and a lot of the, Gary Payton hit like three threes in the third, second quarter or some shit. So um, the words are just—I mean, they've always been an enjoyable watch because you have Steph Curry. Um, but it's just a little bit different after watching them dominate for eight years in this very similar way to see them win a bunch of games now looking differently. So shout out to them. My last guy is finally an obvious one, Tyrese Maxey. Um, oh, okay. 30 points per game, seven with rebounds, six assists, whatever. He's doing his thing. More importantly, I'm just loving the pace he's playing at, mm-hmm. the control he's having of his offense, the playmaking, decision-making. And he's always been an efficient maestro. But to be this efficient as like a, a honcho, is is very impressive because when you become like a honcho, a lead guard, or a, a top name on a scouting report or a top option, the attention is different. So the efficiency is supposed to drop. He's still efficiently shooting a three ball flawlessly. Mm-hmm. He's getting to the cup, um, distributing. He getting to the cup effortless, effortlessly. Yes. And at he, this point, he's doing his thing, man. I'm re- I'm really proud of him. He, mm-hmm. he really handling that. You know, the numbers were supposed to go up, but it's 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 not always just that. It's how it's how you look too, yeah. bro. It's just like your moves are sharper and everything like that. And to me, when I first seen him, kind of like get on the court too, it's I feel like his physique is bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like he looks stronger on the court. Like he can handle, you know, more contact and still keep his balance and in, in, while going 100 miles per hour. Peeping and checking him out. I feel the same dude I'm about to mention next. I feel the same way. Like, he's been in the gym. <laughs> but Devin Vassell, man, his moves look really sharp. He looks like every move, he's been had 100 reps of it. He didn't have thousands of reps of it. 
and he looks like he's ready to take that next level. And I'm really loving what I see from Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell was all he was gonna make my list. I was like, oh, he might be too obvious. Man, Devin Vassell has been flawless. He, I, I love his game, especially now that they got. Vic. He's like, he's like the ideal. I feel like not scoring guard. Like you have your Michael Jordans, Kobe's, and all those same things. It's like the ideal. Like he's gonna be an efficient shooter. He can do his moves. He can create his own shot. He can play defense. Like he's an ideal too. I feel like. Yeah, I like that. I I'm like glad that. you preface it by saying not Michael Jordan. No, no, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. looking like a baby Chris. Middleton. Everybody will want a Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, baby Chris Middleton for yeah. sure. Baby Chris Middleton. Uh, some other guys I want to give shout outs to. Uh, Marcus Smart. Um, I like him the 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 way he's been playing with the Grizzlies. He he's fit in like a glove. He's bro. been more, more some scoring shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I, so shout out to him. Um, they just need somebody to <laughs> score. So it's like I guess. Um. I got a bunch of honorable mentions because I didn't know if we were going to have overlap. Um, Jalen Johnson. He looked really good. Should be number one on the list. He's He's been amazing. And this is real quick because, I mean, it's been kind of too early and it's been whatever for them. But the Timberwolves. Shout out to all the Hawks fans showing me love. La- yesterday's game for the Timberwolves, disappointing. They was up a oh, dub. I was going to talk about it. Up a dub and end up Anthony blowing Harris that lead. Was cooking, he's smiling, and then they just first half. And it Rudy, wasn't even a Trey Young game. Dejounte. First half, Dejounte Rudy Murray. Gobert, man, he was amazing. Specifically in the first half. Mm-hmm. Second half came around. Dejounte Murray became unconscious, right, hitting all of the contested shots you could think of. Um, and I tweeted, uh, "What a crazy, crazy collapse!" Because if you go up by twenty-one and then you end up being down by thirteen in a, almost a single quarter. Some shit then went wrong. And you were holding that that basically 20-point lead. It felt like halfway, at least through the third, too. Like, it was going. Like, you were holding it for a minute before they started making that real big run. Nick, uh, not Nick Nurse. Um, uh, Chris Finch mm-hmm. has a way of not calling timeouts at the right time when the bleeding is happening. Yep. He just, like, let them boys play. And DeJounte is going on an individual run where he's spazzing. And then you simultaneously can't put the ball in the basket. You're missing shot and shot and shot at the rim. And Chris Finch is like, let them boys play. And by the time he did call timeout, we talk about a single-digit game. And all the momentum has shifted. And they're in Atlanta. Momentum has shifted. Trey Young can't shoot. But, damn it, he'll throw a lob or two. Yeah, I was about to say, it, it was a stretch where the Hawks looked really good. Yeah. And I didn't know if it was just because the Timberwolves were collapsing, but when they were playing with pace, they were up and down. DeJounte Murray was getting the transition. Trey Young, he wasn't shooting the ball. But I have Trey Young on my disappointed list. I'll put that out just for, like, this shooting perspective. The shot has not really come around, and sometimes shooters shoot. But you have to kind of, like, adjust throughout the game if it's not falling. Look at the shots he takes. They're tough as hell, but he looks so good when he was going to the rim and getting his floaters and doing that. And it's like... You don't have to take those like those, all those threes. Like if you're getting the opportunities, fine. But you don't have to force it no more at this point. He's been a bad watch. Yeah, he just has. Um, I didn't have him on the most disappointing, be- but because I just figured that somebody would. But yeah, it's it goes without saying. Luckily, over the last couple games, they've been able to win to kind mm-hmm. of weather it all. Because if they were not two and two right now in a poll, if they were one and three or, or even zero oh and four. There would be a lot of more conversation about it. But luckily, again, DeJounte had his really big game, and they smoked the Milwaukee Bucks a couple nights ago. Like That was – man, I think that helped them a lot because mm-hmm. I, I definitely had them getting their ass whooped. But, uh, <laughs> Damian, they had Damian Lillard in a, in a straight jacket. He had yeah. like four turnovers in the first DeJounte. quarter. And uh, uh, DeAndre Hunter. Seven, they was throwing uh, two of them. I think he had like seven turnovers. You know the turnover police is out here. <laughs> uh, shout out to Cole Anthony. Cole, Cole Anthony's Anthony. on my list, yeah. Cole Anthony is is uh, he was my first week um, six man of the year. I love the way Cole Anthony is hooping over there in Orlando. I want to give a big shout out to Cole Anthony, man. Um, sure. Another guy on my list is as an honorable mention is Chet Holmgren, mostly because I I didn't expect him to start off shooting on my the fantasy. ball. Oh, you have more fantasy? Yeah, I didn't think he was going to shoot the ball this good as a rookie, as a seven foot rookie. He is currently shooting. It's not sustainable, obviously. Four three pointers a game and sixty. Two percent from three, <laughs> and he's just he's just stretching the floor for the team that needs somebody that could do that. Mm-hmm. And the fir- in the game against the Denver Nuggets a few days ago, he started off with like the first seven points, um, or I think it might have even been nine points. He had a three. He got to the basket. He had a turnaround mid range. He showed the whole he had like no choice. He had to do something. The head honcho was getting his ass. Jokic was putting his his shoulder in that chest. And that was, was a game that oh. Shea went like two of sixteen. Yep. Yeah. A lot of Peyton Watson and KCP. A lot of that. 
Um, KCP, he wasn't on my list, but shout out to KCP, man. KCP. Peyton Watson was on my honorable mention list as well. Um, Peyton Watson. Peyton, yeah. I remember Calvin Murphy. Or Calvin Murphy. Calvin Booth. Remember, he did the interview with Kevin O'Connor where he was saying, like, everybody wanted to get Bruce Brown, but Peyton Watson's faster. He's bigger. He's a better defender. He can pass well. You're like, damn, they just said F. Brucey Brown. And now we're seeing through the first four games that maybe that's not completely true because Bruce Brown has looked really good as well. But Super he's good. been able to fill the shoes at least decent enough. And he's the best shot blocking guard in basketball right now. Oh, okay, I was so I was waiting to see if somebody was gonna. I didn't know he was a guard. Yeah, they got him listed at two. They got listed at two. Um, last honorable mention I have is Jalen Duran. He's been killing the game. Any more impressives? Nope. Time to get to the not so impressive. Jabari Smith Jr. for me. Jabari Smith Jr. is at the top of my list. Uh, I was just so excited for the season. Me Again, too. we're only talking about the first four games of the year. Can you put the Rockets kind of this in that category as a team? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, he I just thought, hasn't taken better. a jump that I was hoping. Off the summer summer league, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's time. It's time. And it's not, I guess. It's no. the way that they play. It, 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 it It's literally the way that they play, man. I cannot keep harping on it enough. Alperin Shingun is their guy. He is, he is their, He's their bright spot. When he touches the basketball, good things happen. When it's revolving around him, good things happen. Uh, Jalen Green has had a couple of better games after that first game against the Magic. But, like, the shots him and Jabari Smith are trying to take, they are just not – that's not them yet. Those are, like, all-NBA player shots. And – until they understand that the easy buckets and locking up against the transition playing to their he, strengths. He didn't miss in the open it's ones be too tough. though. That like it's just shooting person. He's gotta he gotta shoot better than what they did. But do you look at the shots that he takes? He takes a lot he takes he takes a lot of shots. Oh. Face up, contested yeah. mid range. And he gotta get that field goal percentage up and that three point percentage up too. But the Rockets I feel like the they just had cause we we've seen teams where even you don't start it the way you want to, you could see the light a little bit. Mm-hmm. This one I feel like Grizzlies. This one I feel like there could be some light there, but man, it might be a minute. You know, you're just not having to start that you kind of want to, and I think kind of that is, you know, Jalen Green's been okay. Amen Thompson, he's having a little bit of a slow start, like you said, Jabari Smith. But at least I think they're still kind of figuring. Is a rookie and he's right. not getting the minutes that they get. I think it's it's going to take a minute for this all to come through, man. Yeah. Um, if it well, is there a chance it never. For sure, with everything. See, like, yeah, possibly. I mean, yeah, and nothing's a pot. But I just don't. What, it, what were season, our expectations? We expect them to be the, well, better, but not good. No, I'm. It was like twelfth, eleventh of the players. The players. Oh, well, oh yeah. Oh, I yeah. never expected this team. Nobody had to see them in a playoffs. Yeah, no, no, no. We had them in I like thirteen. Better season. than they were last year. Yeah, and showing some substantial growth between the people that they're going to lean on. What I'm saying is, not that they'll never be good, but it to me. It's a chance that you not you don't build around these guys. To me, it's a chance you have to reshift all of this and say, Shingun is our guy, and we need to see what we have in a men Thompson. And at some point, Cam Whitmore got to get some minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But banking on Jalen Green to be Devin Booker esque player, it might not be in your cards. I'm not saying he's gonna be a horrible. I'm not saying he's a horrible player. But, like, face of the franchise, these are our two top drafted guys, Jabari and Jalen Green, and they still have plenty of time. These guys are extremely young. But I'm just saying it just feels sometimes when I'm watching them that they try to – it's been forced to try to make these guys the guys. I was going to say, yeah, I, I don't we, get – Man, we can't go a game without think this dude doing this. Alf, uh, Alfie is definitely, like, the staple. But Alfie. I don't – Alpie? I said <laughs> Alpie. Alfie is definitely a staple, but I don't get the yeah, I don't get that cohesiveness when I watch them play. And again, this is a new team basically with the addition they got, and it takes some time. But I felt like this has been like that for a minute with the Rockets and what they've been doing. I think it goes into uh, it's time for rookie extensions, right? Because that 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 will let us know exactly what they value as an organization. Is Jalen Green gonna get the money that Tyrese Halliburton or a- a- Anthony Edwards got? Probably not. Will he get Devin Vassell money? Maybe. But it's just a matter of where you hang your hat as an organization. And I think they got some people in charge over there that that are proactive versus reactive. Um, but it's a po- it's definitely a possibility that these guys aren't the guys you expected them to be. Um, I read an article by – it wasn't like from ESPN or something. It was just like an independent uh, journalist that sent it to me. And he was talking about the G League Ignite players 
obviously overreacting a bit to Scoot Henderson's slow first week in the NBA season and kind of comparing them to their like the contemporaries in different places. And then they had a little section about the um, overtime elite, well, obviously with Amin Thompson and Asar Thompson, just the different routes you could take as an NBA player and which one of them so far has been the more successful in the league. Now, the volume of a college player is obviously significantly higher than the G League or overtime at this point. Um, but yeah, through the first... What three, this is year three of G League Ignite. Mm-hmm. Um, Jalen Green was the first. Yeah, and a lot of those players haven't boomed yet. It was him, Hardy, Scoot Henderson. Dyson Daniels, right? Dyson Daniels. Um, it's not a ton of them. So it's a small sample size to even make an assumption about that as a route completely. Um, but it's just a, it's an interesting thought experiment for the next five years or so as we continue to see stuff like that. Yeah, I mean... Hey, take the new route. I'm always college basketball mm-hmm. of all of it, of all of it, all of it, all of it. But, I mean, what was he? Say? What was his comparison? Because I don't know anybody who from the overtime elite is banging shit. Mm-hmm. It's just those. I mean, they were the first two guys, the Thompson. It just need to be that one, that one guy that's like, oh shit, he came out the. Nah, it can't. I be I feel that like one. it will be. It can't be that one. You know why? Why? Because they would just say that one would have did what he was going to do regardless. It has to be a pipeline. If one guy comes in from overtime elite and he's just mm. that dude, my argument is going to be, well, shit, he would have been that dude in college right. maybe, or overtime elite. Mm. Um, but if you have a pipeline, like if Dyson Daniels was, he's been a little disappointed to me. Like but that's was, the meta. Like we got to get a G League player. Yep. Get them off the G League every draft, specifically. Every draft, there's a standout from the G League. Right. Every draft, there's a standout from overtime elite. Then you build up a pipeline. I can see that too. Versus this one Matas is just fucking the game up. It's just like, oh, he would have been whatever he did. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Ron Holland, just a dog. Yep. Well, he would have been wherever he – so – It's just too early to tell right now. But I just think it's something interesting to keep it th- – because one of the big things about um, the G League way is like, well, he's already going against uh, uh, grown-ups. He's already going against NBA talent because obviously the G League and the NBA have had – I think there was a stat that was like 200 and something people that are on rosters to start the year spent time in the G League. So – uh, that was like the big appeal to them. It's like, yes, we just saw School Henderson go against um, I play I, Anthony early. I just don't understand that argument a little bit because, like, the, you, a lot of people have done that before. Brandon Jennings was like the first to do that, where he couldn't, he wasn't going to be eligible to play Arizona, so he went overseas and started this new route. Brandon Jennings came over here and he was good, but like that first week, Steph, uh, he was. He I was, was just talking about that. He got that fifty piece in that first um, week. Steph Curry played against Davidson conference players. And he's good. <laughs> like, there is nothing wrong with just playing against your peers either. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get some crazy advantage. I mean, you might can say that you understand a lifestyle in NBA. You might can pick up some gyms. But that don't just – ain't no guarantee. So that argument has always been swayed because, like, we have some really good guys that come out of college basketball who just play against their peers. Emmanuel Moutier went that route because he was going to be – uh, ineligible uh, to play for SMU and Larry Brown. So remember, he went overseas and then came back the Brandon Jennings way. Jeremy Tyler did the same thing. Like, and y'all remember Jeremy Tyler? Nope. Um, but I could tell you they probably always be giving him that like that bonus or positive on the scouting report or the draft report. Like he's been playing with grown men his whole life, or like as he, when, uh, when he was a kid, he's been playing with people like couple years older than him his whole life and he's a grown man he's there ready for po- a grown man there like. are positives i'm not trying to say it ain't yeah. positives but it ain't like the end all be all where like mm-hmm. that i'm taking mike because mike played in a pro league in europe and Derek went to clemson i give me the best over <laughs> that this draft shit they they just they big hit it so much bro they big they overthink it so much trey murphy broke it down very simple a couple last week y'all remember that trey or troy you troy said? murphy troy um, the Laker guy, Troy no. Murphy used to be a no. A I'm, I'm Troy Troy Weaver. I'm sorry, Troy <laughs> Weaver. Oh, Troy Weaver from the Pistons. Yes, he broke okay. it down. Um, he said Holly Berry gonna look good whether she in church or she at the grocery store. When he was asked about the Thompsons, bro, they're going against the competition of the you know what's crazy? Elite. What blew my mind? Mm-hmm. People on the Twitter on on the internet talking about what he mean by this. Was that science to you? No, that I put that together like that. It's that was very easily got. 
a baddie gonna be a baddie anyway. Yeah. I he should have said Ice Spice. Then they maybe would understand. <laughs> they understand look, uh Holly Berry. Ice Spice look good in Walmart, Target, Walgreens, or on a concert stage. Mm-hmm. Asar Thompson was gonna look good in the G League, the overtime, or in college. You good, you good. That's that I used to tell that to people. Remember when we used to go to high school? We we in high school, you always got to do be here, man. I might transfer because they get recruited over there. Well, motherfucker, basketball, good basketball players get recruited anywhere they go. Mm-hmm. And that's so, why when I be at the gym and, you know, you're just trying to get a game, man. You probably not with your homies or nothing like that. My beard falling off. And you like, hey, you, you got next. And dude might not know you, so he looking around. He trying to find somebody he knows so he can know. I'm like, bro, you got to be weak. Because you, if you good and you can hoop, usually it's, I don't give uh, a fuck. Yeah. Come on. I just need one. That's how I usually be at the gym. Like, man, I just need my team and we good. That got to be cap. What? You know a motherfucker can hoop if, if not based on If a person that look like he cannot hoop say you need one, you saying yes? If another dude over there look like he can't hoop? No. You're going to say no to the to the other guy and want the hooper, the guy that looks like a hooper. I'm talking about the motherfuckers to be, it's 10 people in the gym. He's like, nah, we're going to wait to see if we got one more. No, nah, bro. I think that's just people telling you you don't look like a hooper. Okay, B might be having Because that, that seemed like a I personal feel what you're story. I because that could get annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm Tyler also, is at the gym, and so is... um, And I didn't know Tyler. Yeah, come on. I, only, I Matter of fact, even if he's there, I'll be like, yeah, come on, Tyler. It's a, I'm you, people, I'm, I don't have this problem because mm-hmm. people going to pick me. You might off. blow me in the game if you've been laying bad and you're I might regret it. You're not trying to win games it, there. If I, Tyler I'm, is yeah. at the gym... yes. And there's another dude that's taller than Tyler. He's a black man. You gonna say Tyler, come on, or you gonna be like, actually, I think I want to get him. And I don't know Tyler. I don't know. You don't anything. know Tyler. You don't know anything about Tyler. You don't know either anything about these two dudes. But one of them is your friend Tyler that you know. Versus, yeah. I mean, that would that you know now, but like in this hypothetical, you who asked him. me first? Tyler came up to you and said, "You need." One. Oh, Tyler's on my team. He's yeah. I'm probably pick up Tyler. Tyler's so you wouldn't say, "Oh, I, I was gonna pick up him instead." No. Not if I didn't talk to dude. Yeah, if I didn't that's, talk to I would, to me that's, that that's lame as hell. To me that's to me. lame. To that's, me that's lame. lame as hell. Now, if I had talked to dude and he don't who it's who it's whoever I talk to first. Really? I don't be in the gym trying to stack up teams. Now, yeah, you have a point. If somebody Tyler Tyler is a different case. This is why I draw my line. If you come in that bitch big and out of shape looking crazy, don't come talk cuz you Right. Tyler got his running shoes on. You picking him up? See, no, no, probably no. <laughs> if you don't have basketball shoes on, you could be That'd black. be my first thing when no, I see like people. Like 70% of the in a, people in a, with the Because usually when people ask me to hoop or like run with me, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. I hate when people ask me to hoop and I see them warming up, flip flops. I'm like, bro, is you going to put okay. on your hooping so, shoes, Okay, bro? so I'm going to change the scenario a Okay, bit. do that. It's a s- Sunday, Saturday run, whatever day. And you've been waiting to run as the captain for 40 minutes. Yep. Don't you prioritize the player that looks like a hooper because you've been waiting for so long you don't want to be one and done and have to wait for another 40 minutes? Well, this is well, I gotta come in with this I, hypothetical. If the hoop time is that long, you probably gonna have only hoopers in there. There's not a lot of guys with a Nike track. Mm-hmm. It's so circumstantial because first of all, 40 minutes to hoop. They don't even want to be I'm, in that. Do, am I, a gym, am I an expert that I know? Like I know the people oh, there or whatever. God. Or is this a random no, business? Use just a gym. That you got next in. It's just a gym. Now I'm probably just pick whoever asked me for next. Because I don't even know. I've seen people that are 6'6 six, six and can and look like they can hoop and be absolutely nothing under the That's the court. concrete point on why That's I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Because right. when you when I see people like there's times I've been on teams and I don't have no problem getting picked whether I hoop or not because I'm tall. Yeah. So a lot of people want me to be on the team. Right. But I've been on teams where a dude will get me because I'm tall and they'll get another tall dude and they think we finna run it. And, and the other tall dude they got is weak as hell. So it's like, if you ask me, as long as you don't look super crazy out of shape, <laughs> as long as I didn't just see you hoop and you just shot up all they balls. And yeah, really I, playing, I really don't be caring. Don't play. I, re- I would rather prefer to play with a Tyler type of guy because I know he's he's going to know his fucking role. That's why I say if, if I know the people, I'm just going to pick the people I know because regardless if they athletic as hell because I know we have like some type of chemistry. We played multiple times before. Usually, you trying to find a dude that hoop to. That's gonna be the dude that come on your team, trying to take all the shots. Not that motherfucker got to be raw as hell for me to be up. like, I need that motherfucker. Yeah. On well, my no, team. Okay, you, you stretched it by the way. No, but I was saying that I didn't say that you need this guy. It was just like if <laughs> okay. you had to pick between the two. Oh, okay, Give me I didn't whoever, say you need at the six six dark skin. Whoever asked, I would say seventy five percent time might be going with the tall black guy. Okay, but 
for the most part, I really don't care. Okay. That was a long time. That shit is annoying though when you do see somebody thinking that they. And you know, you know who do that too. No, you know what? You know what? That irritates me so much. Cause yeah, usually, I'm gonna get him and him and I don't really have that problem much. It be the people, especially when I be an export, and they weak as hell. Oh, that, that's why. It's, that's what pisses that's me off. That's why it's lame because well, that's why he wants he wants to build a team he, because he's bad. Yes, bro. That's, that's why you've never seen me, me be the captain of a got next. Who the fuck do I look like telling him he can't hoop when I can't hoop? Dude in there, dude in there, that's running for cardio. But Prisa, Zero I, points, one board, I also three turnovers. Don't have to do that because he's yeah, picking up the team. I, I want to win, but I'm also a person where I, I'm not worried about getting back on this court. It, it, like, I'm literally, going to get picked up. Literally, I can see if maybe it's like so a stacked ass team on the court or whatever like that. Like, but hey, man, what you average in high school? <laughs> Did you play on the team? How tall is you? I don't need to do that because if I lose on this team I just drafted. The next team is going to pick me up. 95% chance, unless they already have a five that they're just friends. But some of us don't have that luxury. What, about getting picked up? Yeah. So that means yeah, we just got to get it how we live. Well, we the small the guys fi- got to be proactive. That's why when we on a five. Or you just got to be well known at the gym. That's why you need to get on Derek and Mike ass. So well, it's been, it's been three years since we've hooped. So. No, no, it's not. It's been no. months. There's this one guy. We at, were just uh, hooping with Terrence Mason. and them. Oh, yeah, in April. You know, uh, so when we go to the gym, or well, you've been to my gym before, I'm pretty sure you've seen like uh, the guys that I be hooping with. It's the one guy he's got the referee always calling the calls. He's the one we talking about yeah, when you talk he's about one of recruiting the, the teams. Um, one of my guys, uh, he's like five three maybe, but we he always gets picked up because he's part of our crew. And it's Ooh, like Reese? I not Reese, no, his name's uh, TJ. Uh. But yeah, he. Probably like to not build you one on your team, but hey, he getting picked up with us. Just by chemistry. Yep. I don't even be looking for hoopers. I look for hustlers. Hoopers try to come in and just do too fucking much. You know what's my favorite team to hoop with? What? That team full of white boys. It's gonna hustle and yeah. they finna cut and they finna play defense. Yeah. Give me some hustle. They be trying to hoop. I want I want some white guys and some dreadheads. <laughs> oh yeah. The dreadheads just got dread unlimited energy. energy. The dreadheads <laughs> is the dude is that they trapping you, bro. Yeah. They yeah. probably got their fab and they run their little traps or whatever and they're yeah. trying to get out of transition. I'll take the white stretch big dude who who could pass and they'll pick a pop. <laughs> I'll take the power forward Dre here who just injure him off. Yeah, the, pa- the athletic I'll power forward. I'll take the former football player who just want to guard everybody. He don't even want to score. He just he he have a fun just just playing defense. <laughs> and then I'll take a a shooter. He could be whatever. And then me. Or I'll, or I'll even take a score. I don't have to be. I don't have to be the. I, score. I like I like myself another dude that's kind of similar to me. He can ball hand on the score, and then just people that's go shoot the ball. That's my little recipe. KB said, give me four scores. I just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me four scores. KB used to be the lockdown back in the day. We put yeah. that boy on Larry Matosis. He was giving up seven inches still on him. Relax, bro. Golly. Um, that was crazy. Disappointments? Uh, uh, Carl Anthony Towns. Yes. Disappointed so far. Ha- hasn't been able to find himself with this uh, this team yet. Um, small sample size start the season, but we can even go all the way back to last year. It's just taking a long time to adjust. Um, I think we talked about last episode, so I don't want to belabor it too much. But yesterday was just another performance where he wasn't um, felt in a positive way. Uh, and we're talking about a guy that's an All NBA player a couple of years ago. You know, mm-hmm. so I think he's averaging like fourteen, fifteen so they points would build per game. The franchise around him. Most yeah. GM said you got to be felt in a positive way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't again. I don't want to belabor it too much, but we need to see. It's way too early back. ones. Way too early for sure. Um, for sure. I'll go around with my next guy. Nice Mention him early. Austin Reeves has just not been the Hell player yeah. we kind of expected. Hell yeah. Um, still way too early, but in these first couple games, it's oh, just no, it ain't early. Even we we I'm can even gonna... go to the against the Magic last game. He. The opportunity doesn't feel like they just they're ready to give it to him all the way yet. He didn't even close out the game. They had um. Because he ain't been on shit. Gabe Vincent closed out the game against Gabe the Vincent, they brought him in. Is it opportunity or is he ain't been on shit? I just think it's culture. Like, man, we're going to put the player that puts us and in honestly, the best opportunity. And I've always been a huge fan, of, regardless of what a fan of or whatever. Like, I like that coaching perspective. If my team or this unit is rolling or this guy's not playing well, we're rolling with this unit because we just want to give ourselves the best chance to win. Regardless of that contract, regardless of whatever, we're trying to win this game. And he just really hasn't been that. Uh, since since everybody's since you just picked off your team, Julius Randle. 
I had him on a list as well. Julius Randle, 14 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists. That sounds high, don't it? 28% from the field, 30% yeah. from three. What's the turnovers? From four turnovers a game. Ah. Ah. And that, that seemed low from what I've watched. I feel like they, they didn't gave turnovers to other people. That has already been his. <laughs> For real. Because, yeah, it's. Well, the first game he had zero turnovers. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So that's carrying. Because that Pelicans game, that oh. was the last game I watched today. You've been feeling good, pretty good about RJ? Hell RJ's yeah. good. RJ RJ's be been, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I, I still have some more people I just, like I just think that, that would be predictable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, but yeah, RJ, would he makes them impressive. Okay, list. let me let me brighten it back up again. I'm going to bring up another impressive. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me finish off okay. the cycle of us picking a player on their on their favorite team. Okay, do it. You better say his name. Well, I could pick seven people, but I'm going to pick Patrick Williams. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, I am vowing on this podcast to not spew the Patrick Williams propaganda until he strings together five good games in a row. So you will not hear me talk about him anymore. For the rest of his career, you're not going to say that? I'm, uh, he, I'm he, just messing. <laughs> that was a joke. He, if he could get us five good games, and not even, he, he don't need to drop 30. Five good what you mean. Patrick Williams games because it's... Good it's, games is not always just going... It's hold on, hold on. a KB, lot of It's stuff. only right. We all did one bad. He also did, I guess, one positive with RJ. You get to do a positive. I don't have one. One positive? I don't have one. Just one. Have you watched the... Well, you haven't watched the boys. There is not a positive. Tory Craig. There we go. Tory Craig. Tory Craig looks good. Can I... I'm going to say my positive. Of course. Helped us win. Uh, D'Angelo Russell? No. Christian Wood. Christian Wood. Christian Wood. True. Yeah. True. Christian yeah, Wood has D'Angelo been really Russell big. was just a magic game, right? Yeah, he's he had, has, what, yeah. He had 12 points in the, the Magic game was the biggest game. Yeah, the Magic game for sure was his biggest. He's definitely not looking like he's been White. doing a lot. He's been doing a little too much. I like the edge of the wrestle, but boy, you're playing with LeBron James and the Davis. Watch out now. He said they need that third star, and it's him. Or well, Austin Reeves ain't been him. So, uh, P- Patrick Williams has not been good. Yesterday was in game number four. That was the first time we've seen him make a layup this season. <laughs> Think about that. That's a crazy stage. Game game four of the season as a starting power forward on the team was the first layup he's made all year. It was his first free throw attempt of the entire season yesterday. How what's the shot attempts looking like though? It's not like he's getting up twelve a game. He's been timid. It's hard to do that with the. He was at, he was averaging four points per I'm game not, before I'm yesterday. Not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying it no more. I'm what tired of hearing it. Uh, it's hard for him to do that. No, fuck that. Who said that? Mike. Oh. I did. Oh. Well, I mean Zach Levine and Demar, they gonna get them shots. I see why. I, I did a breakdown that's going to be on YouTube today mm-hmm. after this podcast of Zach Levine's 51. And outside of his scoring and all of the nice moves and tough shots he made, a lot of the shots he took was a big middle finger to a lot of them saying, hey, y'all ain't on shit. I um, felt I'd rather before. take this fade away off one leg in the mid-range over two people than to kick it out to Patrick Williams or Kobe White. Mm-hmm. There was a play where Zach Levine got on Kobe White a little bit because Kobe White stopped all the way up there instead of dr- running down to the corner to meet him because Zach went to the basket and was trying to wrap it around. He threw it for whatever reason. Kobe he White, went following the ball. Yeah, he stopped right there, and Zach was like, mm-hmm. fuck up. There was a play yesterday where in the corner, both of them was together. Vooch ended up getting the and one. Zach, like, bro, that no, out. the space uh, you saw, you yeah. saw him and Andrew Nimhart thing. Yes, what yeah. was that about? I didn't, I see don't know. Do I, I didn't see him do anything, and nobody addressed it in the pro game press. They got into a little scuffle, and Zach got a tech um, out of character for Zach. Yeah, so I'm like, what is what did Andrew Nimhart do or say? So, but yeah, they just have certain plays where I'm just like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, LeBron is crazy. Why his Halloween costume? Let me see him, him, him in Savannah. Um, I'm trying to. Beetlejuice? I think it is Beetlejuice. Um, and she's Miss Akron, Ohio. So, so shout out to them. Bron did say, "Well, I'm a, I'm a big Halloween person. During this season, me and the family watch four Halloween movies a week." That was last line. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Mannix said, "Zach Levine and O. John and Obi are two names to watch for the 76ers Let's get it. So why we're here? Um, Zach Levine, baby. Um, City of brotherly love. That's my brother, and I love him. <laughs> I wanted to mention Ben Simmons as a as a positive this as season. You should. Uh, Leading that team and rebounding and assists. Yeah, I, uh, Nick Claxton has been uh, was out, so they had him running the the small ball center, and honestly, that lineup looked really damn good. Mm-hmm. You know, they they played the Hornets, which is can you can kind of gauge it on its own, but they kind of forced them to go small themselves. They were like, you know what, we can't give up they these threes to Mark, Mark Williams. Williams. We can't do that. Like they forced him to play that way, and I think when you kind of have that identity or you conform it. It can go a long way for a team, and I, I was high. I was high on the Nets coming in. I said that could be what a top six, seven seed. 
And I mean, I like the grit that they have. I, I can see a little bit of the light. Cam Thomas, I'm gonna say that too. You said him early, but he's been amazing. I don't know how long he's gonna keep up this scoring, but man, he, he's been out. he's been getting <laughs> buckets. So that's fine. And that's out. it. That's all. Strictly buckets. Buckets. Strictly buckets, yeah, cause, bro. Because last night Ben Simmons definitely told his ass. You could you, you should have thrown a lob. He went up and like forced some shit. Ben was like, just throw the lob. <laughs> um Another disappointment. Oh, well, you said also re- School Henderson. School Henderson, 8, 3, and 4, um, 33% from the field, eight, 6, 6% from 3, mm-hmm. 80% from the free throw line, four turnovers a game. Yeah. And my and my thing is then just Derek a little bit of the shit. they was going to be decent. Yes, you did. I think it's just come down to shot selection a little bit more, too. Like, Oh, oh for six, oh for seven, whatever he shot from three. I feel like he could do a lot better than that. Like those those shots, he doesn't need. the catch and shoot one. Like I said, anytime you get a catch and shoot open look and you can knock it down, perfect. But it's when you make it tough on yourself. It's like I could get that shot anytime I want. He's not know? using his burst to his advantage. When I watch him, looks way way better at the rim. And he, there was a play the other night. Damn it, who was it against? Was it Yaka Purtle? It might have been Yaka Purtle. Yeah, they just played the Raptors. Um, where he burst through. And instead of doing any, like, I think whoever was playing the five, it wasn't DeAndre Aiden in the game, but whoever was playing the five was on the the other wing in the dunker spot. He's on the right side. He burst past his defender. Boom. He's at the rim. And instead of maybe dishing it off to the man, he tried to go right up on Jakob, and Jakob just sent that shit to the 12th row. And he didn't even, he didn't go up strong or anything. It was just like, I'm at the rim, so I got to put it towards the rim. It's right. like, ah, defensively, I don't expect any rookie to good, be good defensively. So when they are good defensively, I'm excited about it. A um, lot of miscommunications for the team in its entirety. It's not that's not just a school Henderson thing, uh, but yeah, yeah, man, it's um, rough first week of his NBA career. He's got he got dropped in fantasy. So did <laughs> well, you dropped him? Yes, hell yeah, so I dropped Xavier him. Tillman. I'm on my phone. I see KB drop Xavier. Tillman. Yep, it was good for 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 last week's matchup. <laughs> but now I got two flex spots. Mm-hmm. Don't mess around because this is a total point league. Don't mess around. We got two flex spots in this one, man. So I'm messing with me. Um, I just, I'm just not excited for fantasy basketball. I got Luca and I won one. one it's just not as was another one. But yeah, interesting. The for, points in our system are so crazy. Fantasy football bro. is just way more exciting for whatever reason. Well, yeah. NBA, you got to check every day. No, you don't. Why not? Just set your lineup every Monday. Yeah, that's what I do. Can't you entertain them like you say? I mean, yeah, but if you set it at Monday, oh, you then you don't have to go yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, other disappointments, we mentioned Trey Young, right? Carl Anthony Towns, the mellow ball. You had Julius Randle, Austin Reeves, and Jabari Smith Jr. That's all of my disappointing players so far. Yeah, I would I didn't go really too crazy on the on the disappointing. Like I said, I had more a couple more impressive. But you know, I've been really liking the season so far and what we've been getting as like a product. Yeah. It hasn't been pretty, but it's been fun. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of close games. We got a we got a fifty piece and a forty nine piece already, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, Love a good fifty piece. Yeah. Um, Anything y'all looking forward to? Anybody y'all y'all looking at? Like, man, he's getting traded. James Harden ain't the first, ain't the last. How y'all feel about Cat? Is it really possible? I think it is possible for sure. How how possible for this year, this season? I'm just trying to figure out because I I did this experiment with Pascal. The the Nikola Vucevic, like the center mark, because the experiment with Cat at the four, just not it. Anybody trade for Carlton Towns shouldn't be thinking that we're going to put him alongside a center because it hasn't worked so far for the last season. So the market for a center is just kind of dry. I feel like most teams have the guy that they trust to be their starting center for the now and for the future. So if you trade him for Carlton Towns, what teams are really interested? I mean, the Knicks rumors something, but like, really, you know. Mm-hmm. What other teams could yeah, use could a center a right Randall, now? Yeah. Oh man, oh man. Um, so l- I'll go through the teams. Boston doesn't need a center. Pacers, no. Orlando, Milwaukee, Philly, Detroit. Those are the top six teams in the East right now. None of them need a center. You could maybe make the argument for Orlando because Wendell Carter doesn't look as great, mm-hmm. you know, through the first couple games. But even then, I feel like you'd be jumping the gun to make that a trade. Uh, the Bulls, the Atlanta Hawks, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Brooklyn Nets. None of those teams. You know what? This probably sounds stupid, but it it just sounded crazy. What if the Clippers just went all out? How? How much is Norman Powell contract? 18? Is it 18 mil? How much is? Cat is on a Supermax. Oh, shit. I thought it was at, what's that, like 40-something? Yeah, he's in his 40s. I thought it was close to 30-something. Then you got Charlotte, New York, 
Washington, Miami, Toronto. Out of the whole Eastern Conference, the only one that maybe makes sense is the Knicks. That's it. So that's half of the experiment. Denver, Dallas, uh, Warriors, OKC, Phoenix, and the Kings. Could Dallas think about it? I mean, Derek Lively had a very first good first game, but he's averaged like 12 minutes per game since then. Don't do it. Too much um, money, man. Too much money and also no defense. But Jason Kidd did say we feel good about playing in the 120s. So they're not even hiding the fact that they're not there to play defense. <laughs> they say we got offensive weapons. We're going to score a bunch of points. You might score a bunch of points, but we got one of the best closers in, the, in basketball. Then you got the Kings, the Clippers, the Pelicans, the Lakers, and the Spurs. A la the Pelicans. The Pelicans. I, I think they need rim protection more than anything. I mean, the spacing would be yeah. improved because they suck Zion, right now but. as far as shooting the ball goes. But do you, do you sacrifice – like, what is a, a higher priority for the Pels? Because, again, their, their half-court offense is not as bad as Toronto's, but it is pretty bad at this point, where guys like Matt Ryan called off the bent, uh, called off the street are added to the rotation because they just need shooting. Do you prioritize the shooting I mean, or Valen- the protection of the rim? Valanchunas is not even protecting the rim crazily. No. Not even not at all, if anything. So you do get that boost in, uh, boost in shooting. It's just you got another mouth to feed at this point, you know? Mm-mm. You don't think so? One of the mouths you feeding has to get in that trade. You're not keeping all three of those guys and getting carried into town. I mean, if, I did make that tra- if I didn't make possible. that, if I didn't make that trade, I'm trying to pair him with Zion. I don't know how comfortable you get with trading Bi or no, if you really entertain. I'm not trading idea. Brandon Ingram for Carson Towns. You got I your damn mouth. CJ McCollum, but that's the shooter you got. So I don't know. It's staying a tough spot. I think they're. I don't think you talking about the Timberwolves. I, no, no, no. The, the Pelicans. I think the Pelicans are fine. Well, you're talking about that trade more yeah. so. I, I mean, they're fine. Like, if the option was to trade. Or not trade. Or not trade, I think they're fine right now. Especially the price of Carthony Towns. I mean, the literal contract of Carthony Towns. Yeah. Just, well, I just know, don't think he's. Because you're, you're getting him for this year, but also the next four years on a Supermax. Is he worth the Supermax to you? You know, that's what you have to decide if you're trading for him. Mm-hmm. And the last teams. Um, Do we mention the Spurs? Never mind. The last no, teams don't mention the are the Timberwolves. Oh, what's well, them? The Utah Jazz, the Trailblazers, the Rockets, and Memphis. That's it. Walker Kessler ain't having the the, the, the out of the gate. I thought we get like twenty three minutes per game or something like yeah. that. Um, Averaging less than one block, I believe. Mm-mm-mm. The Spurs is interesting. Oh, who? I don't know. But him and Wimby together would be kind of cool. You don't, don't have do to. It. You don't have to worry about the defense. Don't mess that hey, up. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. We got I, tape in here. <laughs> I, I think tape. you just re- released the mustache completely. I I, I was supposed to mention him too. Oh, Zach Collins been pretty damn decent. He has. He and has. for him coming off those couple of injuries, he's been kind of like what the Spurs look for. He don't got to be crazy rebound, but he can kind of handle the bigger it's bodies. Okay. It's okay. And he's been he's averaging like five six assists for his center, so he's in that playmaking mode too. Ooh. Zach Collins. Um, I, yeah, I like he Zach. He signed Collins. an extension too. Yes, mm-hmm. he did. He said, "Yeah, you got to repay." He said that like they believed in him, so he feels like he's gonna kind of honor that, right? Because yeah, he was down in the dumps a after that years. Portland thing, all of those injuries, and he came onto called Lot- game and he was ass as an interview lottery pick. Yeah, yeah. Out of what college, Mike? Mm, Indiana. That's such a bad guess. white guy university. <laughs> Tall white guy university. Gonzaga. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> boom. Corey Kisper, chat. Corey Kisper's look good too. Yes, he has. Can get honorable mention. Adam Morrison. Zach Collins. Disappoint. Uh, actually, not disappointed. Cal I, had, I had zero expectations. Who? The Wizards. What's my what's, what's big fella name? Who was killing over there? But ain't on shit in the league. The big man. He was just like Gonzaga. Number two. Drew Timmy. Oh. 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 Where's Where's For Drew real. Timmy at? He just got released by the Bucks. Mm. Or he ain't make the Bucks. Did my boy Robert roster. Robert Sacre go down? Yes. Yes, he did. Such a rant. Oh, he's like Ronnie a- Turry off too. Mm. Who would have thought that the Zags would end up being a powerhouse? You say Jalen Suggs. Probably right. Julian Strother. Jo- John Stockton. Mm. 
I know he went there. For real? <laughs> There's no, no reason to know anything about John Stark, no. though. What are y'all doing today for Halloween? That's if how you look in the, the jersey, yeah. They got it. Because Gonzaga do feel like a school that was just built. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where it's at. It's like in the West Coast. You're talking about what we doing for. What are you doing for Halloween? You have a kid. Um, we're not going trick or treating because it's snowing and it's cold as shit. So she's gonna dress up, but she's gonna be giving candy to the kids versus going yeah. to get candy. Oh, that's cool. She did uh, trick or treating the other day, so that's probably her trick or treat experience. This is my first time. My parents have a a house, and it's gonna be Halloween. So I wonder how they're gonna be doing with that. Because right. my mom, what you mean a house? They've always lived in like an apartment building. Well, I guess a townhouse, but nobody really goes trick or treating in those areas. Your parents like, don't live in a town or something. No, they live in a house. Oh, where the fuck was I been at? Remember, I told you they moved a couple months ago, and I was like, they asked me to help them move, and I got there. And they didn't have yeah, shit packed up. They damn near expected me to pack up the house. Same area. <laughs> move it. They moved out of that area. Uh, basically same area. They live in like that's, 10, 15 minutes away. That's what's up. Congratulations to your parents. I didn't know that. I, I Seriously, I don't know where. Her family's just getting money in 2023. Man. Um, but my mom, she <laughs> said. You, yeah, you ever notice how mo- how uncomfortable we get when people talk about money and stuff? Because his, pe- his parents got that PPP loan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his mom got a baking company. <laughs> And that's actually At, a candy store. Not B, <laughs> not B A K I N G, a B A C O N, a baking company. <laughs> uh, my my sister and that she whole said time the baking company is them getting zooty. <laughs> my mom don't smoke. Uh, you and your d- never mind. <laughs> He be spoiling everything. <laughs> he definitely fits that costume. He's federal P right yeah, now. I'm sorry, that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, my, no, my mom is taking. He said that your dad smoked on him before. He does. Yeah. I mean, it's legal. Yeah. Uh, they're they're taking um. <laughs> they said they have like a trunk part or not like you know how they do it out the trunk or whatever. Trunk or treating. Yeah, they're doing that way. <laughs> I just said that. Oh, I thought you said you were doing some other shit. Mike, I said I Mike said Miller. We, <laughs> he kept he kept distracting me. I said we took Avery trunk or treating uh, a couple of days ago when it was nice. Well, you better not do a third of five and a third of six, so I'll be arrested. When I went trick or treating and I ring home my bag of candy, my mom be like, "Yeah, okay, split it up." She taking most of that shit, bro. They put it right in the freezer. Bro, you're 27. <laughs> I'm talking about when I was a kid. Oh, oh no, when I was a kid. Oh. I, you going trick or treating? Hell no, I'm not. Oh, going okay, I'm about to say I'd be damned if you think I'm going trick or treating. <laughs> No, I did. But you can pass for a high schooler with the mask on, obviously. When was the last time y'all went? Last year. You you as a like intending for you. Oh, I've never. Oh man, I I was a kid. Freshman year of high school, maybe. I feel like I was was going. I feel like we was. Ooh, I don't know if I was going to high school like that. But I remember like Burr Ridge. I felt like we was kind of like getting up there in age, and we would just all go out. We wouldn't even have no costume. Yeah, we just have like a little bag. Yeah, I was like that one kid. Go to Burr Ridge. I would wear a jersey and say that I was whatever player. I'm Reggie. I'm, I'm Reggie Kevin Durant. I'm Kevin Durant. <laughs> I'm Kevin Durant. Yeah, I'm not a big Halloween guy. Mm-mm. Um, I like my type the of vibes holiday, of Halloween. But I mean, I dressed up because we did it for work. But yeah, I've never been like I'm going trick or treating. It was weird. Did, did were your was your costume on sale? No, that's why I called Mike. I said, "Hey, if you lying about having a costume, I'm whipping your ass." <laughs> <laughs> this is expensive to just wear because I'm finna go home and take this shit off. Yeah. yeah. How much is your shit? Fifty bucks. Same. And I bought a gun holster <laughs> <laughs> because I thought a gun came in it. I opened it was it just and a it was holster. No gun. But on a picture, it got like an orange gun in there. It's I'm probably like, best that you don't have that. I was. Why? So I was gonna shoot you in your face. No, I'm just talking about. Never mind. Being outside. Yeah. They might see it. That's why I thought the dumbest shit ever is when they he had He got that. a gun. <laughs> it must it's, be orange. It's orange. <laughs> who, who, no, they got, that's that new gun. <laughs> the person who had that phone case that was shaped like a gun. Yeah. That shit was a, that was a setup. Yeah. That's got to be the most idiotic thing you could, I hope no, no that, black that person ever idiotic. bought that, bro. That was, that, that's, the, that's them trying to get our people to get that so that they can have a reason. Who even thought that shit was cool? <laughs> it's not cool at all. Um, what would be the greatest host- like what's a, what's a great costume that would like I was so if I would have had more time and for like remember it, I wanted to be the elastic waistband Patrick from um oh okay he said you uh, uh, what he say he said want to see me touch my toes and he did yeah it like- and it went back he went back <laughs> like, all they had to do was get like a green jumpsuit and some goggles that's he the said, whole I costume. could finally touch my toes yeah. And I think it would have been cool if we all, like you were Crocodile or whatever, whatever the hell. Nah, Miss I'd be Spongebob. 
Because I'm fast. I wanted to be a pimp. They didn't have my a side. pimp named Slimpack. They said mobster, but I was, I'm gonna make this a pimp. <laughs> I like um, I Bill was, from RDC was uh, uh, Cameron with the pink. Yes, oh, I yeah. saw that. Um, yeah. I what was like, that? F. It was F. Sorry. When I was F, at F, uh, F, it was yeah, a Halloween F, store, yeah. they had a costume, and it was it was like a like a rapper one, and it had a big ass chain, <laughs> and it had a fro too. I was like, maybe I might do this. It had a fro. It had a. It, yeah. I don't know about that one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, they no, had dude, you know they had posing in it right a white guy a white dude. yo man talk about some yo 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 <laughs> homie <laughs> yo what's good homie g what up my my nick uh, no <laughs> <laughs> there's a on tiktok right now this is the best time to be on tiktok as you see everybody else's costume and there's some good ones out there mm-hmm. some very obscure references too. i wanted to be chris haynes I was just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> you I just saw, got a Chris Haynes notification. They extended Moses booty. Did um was that Drake who was Devin Booker? No, that was uh um, Who was that? That was OBJ. OBJ, oh, okay. right. That, that was And they were like, I he didn't even have the jersey. He just had a fit Bro, yeah, he, he literally just had, just had, he a, just had a Devin Booker like fit, and I think he had the Air Force One. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, it. He didn't have no man. jersey, no assessment. Please shit. look up OBJ Devin I Booker. See this shit. That's wild. I've always been like, when you ever dressed up, and it's probably not too many, do you ever go for like, I'm trying to have like a funny type costume, or you go like, I'm trying to go for the scary, like Halloween type vibes? Uh, neither. I just want to be distinguishable. Like when I came in with the mask and my, this over my left I know eye, exactly who you were. People knew it was Kakashi. But they also had another one that was just, it was called um, Villager. It was, <laughs> oh, it was this no. exact thing without yeah. the Kakashi mask. So I was just a normal, like, um, what you bro? Mean? This Tune man in. got a fit on. He just got a fit on, bro. Talk about I'm he, Devin Booker. He got the Detroit Lions hat. Like, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, and the other one, the tuning one, was a lot cheaper. Either oh. you want to pay fifty dollars to be Kakashi, or you could just be a random ninja in the Hidden Leaf Village. I seen. <laughs> I want to be Kakashi. Like, Who yeah. I should have been? Uh, that that future, the future album cover. What is that? I don't like you. I don't like you. I never liked you. I never liked you. Oh, uh, I I, like when I I was like I seen the cover on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that would have been a good See, costume. See, I like costumes like that when you just, you kind of make your own costume exactly. and you just mimic something or you yeah. try to act like somebody. That would have, have been dope. Oh, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I remember. Yo, you got to get fitted up for that. You got to get real fitted. Yeah. I, I wanted to be uh, Sanji as well. I almost put it together because it was two different costumes. One of them was just a, a blonde wig. You know what's funny? I, oh, yeah, because I sent you, I think I sent you a Snapchat when I was at the store. I sent, it was like the One Piece one. Yeah. And I was about to say, like, bro, I just wear that shit regularly. <laughs> what you talking about? I was just going to get a blonde wig, and then there was another thing called lawyer. So it had a suit, like a fake oh, suit. Oh, yeah. So all I need is that, you, and you then I see it. Go, go to the corner. Get a cig, or you can get, like, a pan. Oh, like, a dude. like a who? A frying pan. Oh, true. And just walk true. around with that. Yeah. That's yeah. what's up. And I, I thought about it, but also don't want a cig. We need to do just more. I, like, I, went, I ultimately went with this one because I like acting. So I get the chance. Hey. Check it out, sweetheart. I pulled you over. You're doing 36 and 35. <laughs> but by the look of those thighs, I wouldn't be surprised. You're talking about, you know where I life. pulled you over? Yeah, because you, you driving you, without my number. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was on family. You know what I said? You know <laughs> why I pulled you over? No, officer, why? Because you got some big ass titties. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> we got to end, bro. I don't know what the hell is happening right now. <laughs> All right. That's how I picture. That's how I picture sheriffs, not police. But I just feel like sh- maybe it's the Reno nine one. Have y'all ever seen Reno nine one? I seen yeah. Reno nine one one. Maybe it's the Reno nine one one in me. Where I just feel like sheriffs, they just say, well, police officers do anything that they want to do, but sheriffs really just is just like, just yeah. Shout out to Reno nine one one. That's really my inspiration. Um, oh man, one of my favorite <laughs> skits from that is like they were in a school. And uh, they had a metal detector. They're like, yeah, it's getting crazy out here. We got the metal detector for the kids c- going through and stuff. And then one of the guys is like, it's not plugged in. It's not plugged in. And then you heard in the background, like, gunshots. Oh. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> And they start running towards the gunfire. Uh, ahead of his time, man. Ahead of his time. Yeah. Ahead of his time. They don't make TV like that. No when I was a kid. Ki- ki- when I say kid, yeah, I, yeah. I thought that was like. Real? Real. I thought it was like cops. Mm, so yeah, these yeah. skits, and in my mind, I'm thinking as a shorty that this is real stuff. 
I was always watching Lord of oh, Squad. I, mean, the other day. I, I missed a big. I had. I dropped. Lord of Squad is so funny. I watched that maybe like a year ago. I dropped the ball. I should have made my name tag. I got a pee wee. I should have been Officer D Big. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. also could have been that dude that D-Mill seen that Lifetime. He was like, I trained you. I should have dressed up. This. <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna, just a dude. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. d Mills would have been like, who are you? I'd be like, uh, <laughs> that's a skit. <laughs> that's a skit. That's a through the wire skit. What you dressed up as? I'm dressed. You don't, You can't tell what I am? I'm the dude from the gym. <laughs> that would have been crazy. Uh, we should have dressed up as each other. Should we should do that. We I should just have it. a bunch of those days, bro. We need to have like a calendar where we have dress up days. Your thick ass got the TV. Yeah, it's supposed to. We well, we did y'all did the jersey. We did Jersey Day. We dressed mm-hmm. up as you. We Halloween. We dressed up as you. We definitely need to do them more regularly, but we we working on it. 2024. For sure. For sure. We just ran. 2024 for sure. Uh if you enjoyed this episode of Through the Wire, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe. Well, it's up to you actually. I'm not even gonna tell you to do that anymore. Um and Be fast stars at the heliocentric. <laughs> 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 and we'll we'll see y'all uh in a couple Devin days. Booker. He gonna be my next guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'ma just get OBJ. <laughs> I'ma just get OBJ to dress up as him a couple of the show. We out. I'm the one who locked up Drewski at Casanet. <laughs>